I think if I was to identify one phrase that comes up a lot in my videos, or maybe just my mind, it is, let's back up a little bit. I find that I, when I want to explain a concept, uh, I am relying on some building blocks. And sometimes I realize those building blocks aren't there. And this is one of those times. So um, this is not actually an inter in intercom concepts video. It's an engineering concepts video. And these concepts are going to be universally advantageous to everyone in the AVL industry. Um, two things, connectors relating to signals and connectors and signals being standardized versus being proprietary. What I mean here is uh, on your first day, you may, might have been the gopher and been sent to go get a microphone cable. You go over to the bin and you look through all the labels and one of them says AC cables. One of them says, I don't know, shackles. One of them says XLR and one of them says BNC. But none of them say microphone cable. So you go back to the gentleman or person that uh, sent you over there and you say, I'm sorry, sir, there's no, um, there's no microphone cables. And he says, what are you, what are you talking about? And you walk over together. He reaches in the XLR bin and says, XLR microphone, same thing. And you're like, oh shoot, two names for the same thing. Okay, great. And you combine them. You now know that when somebody asks for a microphone cable, they'll be happy if you bring them an XLR cable. And you kind of put those two things together. You're one step better. And you realize these patterns over and over. And as you're going up through this, you start to have this connection. And it's not when he says this, this means it. The next one is that they're stuck together. Signal equals connector. Connector equals signal. And so you've not even thought about the difference in between a microphone cable and a uh, XLR cable or a microphone jack and an XLR jack. They're synonymous and you know exactly what's going on. That's great if you're doing the same thing all the time. If you're free thinking, if you're building or um, improving things, maybe uh, putting things together that weren't exactly meant to go together, you need to go to this little fourth step to the, where the little man is flying. And you need to let go of the connector equaling the signal, because this is a correlation, a locked together relationship that is not fair. So what do you mean by this, Rob? I mean, I kind of get it. Well, we'll go to an example. The XLR cable, one connector, many signals. Common uses would be these things. A list is going to fall out of here. You can tell me what I missed in the comments, but these are the very common ones that I could come up with. And so look, this cable is capable of many things that you might not have thought it was if all it was, was a microphone cable to you. It's these other things and it's an XLR. It's one more thing. It's capable of carrying line level analog audio. And so that's a very, very common type. Let's go around and switch this uh, example on its head and say one signal, many cables or many connectors. Line level can be seen in these connectors. And so if you take this whole list of signal types, and you take this whole list of connector types, they, you realize that they are really a fluid thing and they're not locked together at all. So do not confuse or do not combine illogically connector type and signal type. That's the first engineering concept here. And, um, oh, yeah, so if we wanna talk about this from an intercom perspective, the point is, a lot of times, the RJ12 or the RJ45 is a very common connector type in the intercom world. And yes, line level audio is or may be traveling across that RJ45 
But Rob, I thought an RJ45 was an Ethernet connector. It is. But ergo, the exercise and the principle that we just went through, an RJ45 can be Ethernet. It can be audio. It might. There's tons of things that an RJ45 can be as well. So just let your mind go a little bit instead of it being locked together, signal type to connector type. Okay. And then the next thing we're going to look at is this idea of the proprietary versus the standards in signals and in connectors. Thanks for coming back to the second half of the video. I appreciate you sticking in here. Uh, I think that this half will go faster. Your mind is already open and looking at some nuances and details. So I really appreciate it. I want to say I have two questions in this section. I'm going to answer one of the questions and I need you to answer one of the questions. It'll be fun. I promise. The question that I'm going to ask and then answer is standards or proprietary, which is better. And I'm going to say, oh, I'm just going to wimp out a little bit and say, yes, but it's also true. Sometimes standards is better. Sometimes proprietary is the only way for it to be done. Here's an example. This is a power supply from RTS. It just happens to be an intercom power supply. This was the best example I could come up with. This is a power supply for a KP32. It is proprietary. There are lots of pins in there, which I can't show you. It has different voltages that come out of here, and it was needed by the RTS engineers to be built so that they could do the things that they needed. Proprietary. But they knew they did not want to be limiting themselves into what was going to be plugged into here. So this is the end of the proprietary part. And look, there's a little hole in there. And this is my question for you. I'd like to hear in the comments, what do you call this connector? Please tell me your industry and tell me what you call this. And if somebody says it, just like their comment. But this is a glorious example. Proprietary, crafted especially for the needs of the RTS device. And then a common connector, even so much so that this is a North American plug, right? So proprietary becomes standard. RTS item, RTS power supply, common interchange to connect to other devices. And this is the magic right here. Just because it's an RTS power supply doesn't mean it needs to be an RTS power cable or an a RTS mains connector into the wall. So please be on the lookout for where you can use the standards in your audio, video, lighting world. Use the standards that allow interoperability in between your devices or your um, departments or whatever. So be on the lookout for where we are speaking standard languages for interchange. And as we turn our mind back to intercom, these standards are going to become wildly important. It's not all proprietary. Some of it's proprietary, but these proprietary people want to be interchangers and able to connect to other things that are not exactly in their world, adjacent, whatever you want, whatever you want to say. So standards versus, uh, what was it? proprietary. That's it. They both have their place and look out for them to change along the signal path, but go through probably a segment where it's a standard so it can be connected to other things. So let's move on from here. And the next video will be ports.